Hello and welcome to our brand new podcast, Rollmongers Presents Dice Before Dishonor. But before we jump right into War for the Crown, maybe some of you have, it's been out all month, we thought we would go on a binge. As promised, the Glass Cannon Podcast, Mr. Troy Valley, we have picked up your gauntlets as you threw down on the ground in cannon fodder. To surprise Joe O'Brien and his amazing little halfling cavalier, we have decided to put forth in War for the Crown a podcast actual play, play test, play a little prologue for you to see if a party mainly consisting, if not completely consisting of cavaliers, would actually work. So now we bring you Honor's Echo, a Pathfinder Society adventure, which consists of six mini quests. The last one bringing in major players of the Taldor court to see if these guys can fight the good fight in around the country, schmooze with the best of them, and still come out like a regular party, if not better. Perhaps worse. We will find out. Let me go around the room for our cast of players. First, on my DM's assistant chair, on my side of the chair, we have Mr. Aiden Willems. You know him from our Star Wars actual play podcast. We shot first as Poser Sham, our Jedi in hiding. He also plays the dark and brooding sorcerer Vraskin under Clinton Shard in Clinton's Core Classics, Pathfinder's Rise of the Rune Lords, another podcast actual play that Rollmongers puts out that you should check out both in your spare time. Tonight, and until somebody dies or leaves the podcast, he belongs to me. Our resident rule lawyer for the defense, Mr. Aiden Willem. Whoa, uh, 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 time to kill the party. Hey, how's it going? Next up, speaking of rules lawyers, a man that I have, well, shall we say, relied heavily on in the world of rules, Mr. J. Tamlin, prosecutor for, well, the prosecution who likes to debate the rules, but pulls out them true, and we can actually brand ourselves rules as written, role mongers raw. Playing tonight? I practiced the law, I practically perfected it. Mr. J. Tamlin? Rolling down the list, the lead in our Star Wars cast, playing Raul Olbrus, the noble, the man with the plan tonight, Mr. Matt Witt. Tally ho! How's everybody doing? And of course, without Matt, we bring his faithful sidekick, but tonight, not a sidekick, a peer, perhaps even more forthrunning. The funniest man in the room, the guy with the best con back, and lick every wall, Mr. Ryan Messina. How's it going? Where's your wall? Hey! It's gonna become my friend. To complete our dynamic duo, a late comer to role mongers, but a man who has always held his own and fantastic in the role playing aspect of exposition of anything you hand him on a sheet, expanding it, crunching it, and making it his own, Mr. Frank Hamilton. That was a dramatic pause. Thank you, everybody. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, thanks for listening. Uh, I hope to give you something uh, really great. Now, we have one more surprise for you. Playing under myself, a GM of his own caliber, the man that runs Clinton's Core Classics, Clinton Shard himself from Rise of Rune Lords. Thank you so much for joining us as a player tonight. I am back for the very first time. That's All true. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's making his debut as a player for Rollmongers instead of running. I uh, used to be playing under him in Rise of Rune Lords, but tonight, tonight you belong to me. The tables have turned. So, gentlemen. There is so much to explain for people to wrap their heads around. Let us start briefly, as we can, with Taldor. If, and I highly recommend you listen to Cannon Fodder episode 87, where Crystal Fraser, the lead director on the War for the Crown Adventure Path, has been interviewed thoroughly by the GCP. She can tell you quite a bit about her vision for this, where she's going with this. Be sure to check them out. But tonight, we're going to tell you a little bit about Taldor. If someone had to compare this to our own history, let's go back. Hundreds of years, thousands of years. I'm getting a sense of Rome. They landed, they civilized, they built good roads, good aqueducts, and expanded and had all these mini crusades off into different territories all around Taldor. Boom, 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 boom. Expand, expand, expand. They have a long lasting feud with neighboring countries, but we'll get into that later. Now they've elevated themselves to sort of a French snobby court where the nobles dine and refine. The Senate bogs most things down in red tape and the common man is really looking for some new blood, something new. There's a special vote about to happen in the Taldorian court where they're trying to remove the fact that a ruling heir must be a man. Unfortunately, Prince Stavian the third, our current ruler, had a son who died. Terrible accent, but he has a daughter. Princess, well, you know what? How about we just drop you right into the action? Welcome to Taldor. Welcome to Dice Before Dishonor. Politics abound will come at the players. But for right now, gentlemen, for whatever reason you may or may not know each other, 
You have been brought together by a man who wishes to regain his noble status. Romero Alcasti claims to have had an ancestor in the past, risen to greatness, a war hero, and was cast down by former rulers. He wishes to re-elevate her status and hence, obviously, elevate his own. But before he can do that, he needs evidence. He sends you a parte of six handwritten letters and the money you need to travel to different places to garner this evidence in his steed. Adventure abounds as you will travel deep into the Verdon Forest, to the museum farm outside of Elmas, into the own Acasti tomb, right into the main capital itself of Opara, to the last bastion of Arden. Talk to priests, talk to commoners, talk to nobles, and even across the way, Quadrit. But first, gentlemen, let's go around the room and talk about your characters, your cavaliers, paladins, and wait, even have a fly samurai, just to mix things up a little bit. Top of the list, let's start with the purest of the pure cavaliers that I can find in this group. Mr. Frank Hamilton, tell us about your cavalier, sir. Well, uh, technically one of the lords of Blackwater, so that's a far-flung barony in eastern Taldor. I'll be playing Samish Gildervarth Stavian, and he's the kind of guy that, you know, although born into nobility, he kind of wants not a whole lot to do with it, seeing it as a truly ruinous event in Taldor. So he'll say that, uh, you know, only catastrophe would give him the reins of responsibility. Now, I believe one of the things in the player's handbook allows you guys to take feats and attach yourself to important noble families. Would you say as a cavalier, that's about as far as you go working for the military? And actually, or have you actually attached yourself to any family? Oh, uh, yeah. He's actually um, a distant cousin to the crown prince. Oh, bless you, sir. Goes right for the juggler. Yep. So he's got the Stavian name. So he would have inherited it on his mother's side. So no way he can inherit the throne. But you can still drop the name. That's right. It's all, all, right. About, it's all about name dropping. Next, Mr. Clinton Chard, Frank's friend of real life, a DM around the Saturday night meat table. These guys came as a package deal to Rollmongers and neither have disappointed. Clinton, tell us about your character. Well, I'm uh, Gordas Tapo. I'm an ex-soldier that has come from a dishonored nobility family. A great calamity happened to his family and his family had been disgraced. They're now uh, persona non grata. So um, I tried to hide that heritage as much as I possibly can, but I'm this, I'm a young grizzled soldier who uh, uses bow rather than ride a horse per se. And so I, as a castellan, I want to defend local families and I've came across the lion's order and I felt that that was the most appropriate, which is, well, we can get into that later in the game, I suppose. Now, not to be confused with the Taldarian order, the lion's yes, blades. This is the cavalier the order, order, lion of the order. Okay. Just to be clear. All yes. right. Next on the chopping block, we have Mr. Matt Witt playing. Now, so far, we've been dipping into the human pond, I'm assuming, because no one's stated the race. So we're yes, all de facto I'm humans. Human. Yes, de facto both. human so far. Mr. Matt Witt. Okay. So uh, I am playing Winston, the portly. He is a halfling beast rider, cavalier, order of the paw. Uh, he's sworn to uh, defend the, ha the various halfling settlements on the outskirts of Talador because obviously the local human population doesn't really view them as being um, of equal right, <laughs> so to speak. So they don't look after the halfling settlements, so somebody's got to pick up the slack, and that's, that's what the Order of the Paw does. I ride a wolf. Is it a uh, magical wolf? It's not a magical wolf. Okay, maybe, that's good. Maybe one day it will be. We had to make that clear. You hear that? No magical wolves. Okay. No, just just a regular old ordinary wolf that I ride. Can he go up and down stairs? Sorry, he I can notice. actually quite fluently. He can charge up and down. Stairs. So you actually have the advantage of having a small character, but on a medium mount where you can actually squeeze in places indoors where guys on a great big four square horse, a large creature cannot. Yes. Well, Winston the Portly requires this because he, he's really not good at getting around on his own. Um, Hence quite the rotund. <laughs> Hence the portly. Quite rotund. In fact, it doesn't even look like he has anything above the knees because his belly just laps right past them. Okay. That should be very interesting. Bringing us to our next exotic character, the alternate to Cavalier is the samurai. So technically perfectly legal to play one as far as we're concerned. Mr. J. Talon, tell us about your fly samurai guy. Wa hakuryu setsuna to moshimasu. Is, it, is this why people scream at you speak English because your Japanese is <laughs> coming out in pieces? That was really embarrassing. That was really embarrassing. <laughs> um, for those that know, Jay Tamlin actually can speak Japanese when we don't put a microphone and like a camera on him. 
So without subtitles, because this is a podcast, you know, I don't think people yeah, can yeah. see the subtitles. Uh, no, my character's name is Haruyuki Setsuna, and generally he goes by Leon. His family came to Opara about probably about 10 to 15 years ago. Uh, he and his mother ended up getting attached to the Vinmark family. Okay. And what are they known for? Uh, they are the Ulfen Norse people that came in and are a newly established family. We kind of got attached because they are the ones that took us here and they have my stuff. Oh, sort of like a reverse uh, Jade Regent where in Jade Regent you start in Varisia, go up through the Northlands and deal with the Ulfens and then come down into Zaitan. You kind of like came up through Zaitan, dealt with the Ulfens. They took your stuff, you said? Yeah, mum says that my family has escaped some kind of some kind of war or something. And in running away, we had to get attached to the Ulfen people and they brought us here. Ah, so the family holding secrets from you that will probably be brought out to light to you, let alone to us in the future. And you are playing a samurai. Next, yes. we have another fighter, another warrior for the common man, another servant class. Ryan, tell us about your character. I'm uh, playing Bartholomew Donald Duggan, cavalier extraordinaire, a little more yelly than your average kind of cavalier, but that's only because he's been really put through the grinder, so to speak. He's a half of which in Taldor isn't really smiled on, not just because it's tough. Yeah, you're part of the servant class, as it were. Yeah, so that's why he spent his entire life in the military academy ever since his birth. Grandpa, once he found out about Bartholomew's birth, pretty much made sure the mum wasn't an issue. Uh, she was sent away. And due to the fact that he is a Dunaldagon, it is a lesser noble family, but still a Dunaldagon. That kind of a shame had to be taken responsibility for, and so was probably put into a proper cause. And the best way that they saw that Bartholomew could serve the family would be in a military career, and hopefully he could die a glorious battle. At the very least, and, and bring the family... shipped you off to military school, and hopefully you die in a terrible military accident, and they'd be rid of you. Exactly. That's terrible. I love uh, it. Your, your family's awful. This is wonderful. That's a Taldorian noble for you. <laughs> okay. Gentlemen, welcome to Taldor, and we will begin your adventure now. Prologue of Six Parts Honors Echo, a Pathfinder Society adventure set just prior to our War for the Crown adventure path, which will introduce our band of cavaliers to the inner sea region setting of Taldor and its dangers both afield and within the political arena. Four millennia, magnificent Taldor reigned as an enduring empire praised for its culture, military wealth, and connections to the glory of Aslant. By the beginning of the 5th millennium AR, Taldor had begun to sag under the weight of its excessive ceremony and decadence. Its old rival, Kadiria, led an invasion against its declining neighbor in the year 4079. Sensing an opportunity, many of Taldor's western provinces declared their independence in what was called the Elven-Tongued Conquest, a war on two fronts that the Empire could not handle. Taldor repelled the Kadarian forces, and it never regained its lost lands again. In the aftermath of the war, emperors of Taldor sought scapegoats to bear the shame of their defeat. They stripped numerous noble families of their titles and lands to condemn their failures in the two campaigns. Most who suffered this punishment faded into obscurity and never rose again. For an ambitious few, reclaiming the titles they should have inherited is an all-consuming goal. Countess Honeria Alcasti was an influential commander during the campaigns before and immediately following the Elven Tongue Conquest, yet all her skill could not make up for the shortage of supplies, and her career came to an ignoble end. When she dared to critique the crown strategies, the emperor sentenced her family to a life as the common people. Now, many years later, her many times great-grandson, Romeo Alcasti, has incomplete references to his ancestor's heroism and title. As he longs to exonerate her name and regain the noble title that he believes he deserves, if he can gather the right evidence and present it in 
opara. He is certain he will succeed and regain that title. He needs our Cavaliers to help follow his leads across several countries to uncover the truth and the evidence in hand to advocate for his ancestors' grand legacy. Welcome to Dice Before Dishonor. Dishonor. 